In this video, I'm going to show you how to use a 3D printer to make your own 3D stencil for 3D printed lures or just in general any 3D printed models. I will show you different ways to achieve this and also if you look at this result, you can see there's a gap between the stencil and the model itself. I will explain how to do that as well. So let's get started. The tool that I'm using here is called Fusion 360 and what I have here is a 3D duckling model. The first thing you do is split it in half. The first method is pretty straightforward. Just use the shell feature in Fusion 360. What you do is you click the surface that you want to dig into or the side that you want to leave open. Then set the shell thickness and also the direction. Here we want the outside shell. And next we want to create the offset. Uh, the way I do it is I create a thinner shell and then subtract the thinner shell from the thicker one to create the offset. Because previously we already turned the uh, duck model into the shell, so we need to make a copy of the duck model first in order to create a thinner shell. So I go back to the timeline and grab the dark model when it's still available, make a copy over there, and move the timeline to the current time, then create a thinner shell for the offset. And now we have two shells, one is thicker, one is thinner, and we will use combine feature to cut the thinner shell out from the thicker one to create the offset. The gap between the stencil and the object is important because you want to leave some tolerance or clearance between the 3D printed objects and also by controlling the gap you can control the airbrush result in terms of the sharpness of the painted edges. Another way to create the shell is to grow the surface into the desired thickness. So here first we break the solid model into the surfaces to do that, we go to the surface workspace and then select the unstitch, this icon. Remember to uncheck the chain selection. If you use the chain selection, it will break the solid into a bunch of surfaces. If you uncheck the chain selection, it will just unstitch the one that you select. And now we have the surface with zero thickness. Next is to uh, make it thicker using the thicken feature. Personally, I like this method better because I feel it has a better chance to successfully make the shell at the desired thickness. So give it a try and let us know your experience. Now let's get back to making the stencil. Once we have created a shell, next is to punch out the cutouts. Here we draw the shapes of the cutouts, then use the extrude feature. If the stencil surface is somewhat parallel to the extrude direction, we might get some undesired result. In this case, we can create a 3D cutting tool and use combine then cut function to create the punch out. So we start from a line, project to the surface of the model, then create an object like a pipe form for example.
another approach is to do the punch out first on the surface and then thicken the surface. We can hide the surface so it's easier to select the path. The extend splitting tool option doesn't make much difference here. Now we have punched out the surface, let's give it a thickness. When I set the thickness to 1mm and I got some issues, so I had to select a slightly larger number to pass the problem. Let's make a note here, we'll get back to this later. I was not super happy about some of the results, for example this slot near the eyes and the beak area. I want it to be closer to the center plane, but fortunately we can go back to the history and uh, modify the profile. As you can see here, we are able to bring the beginning of the slot closer to the center line very easily. And there's no undesired result as what we will see when we just make the shell first and then extrude from the center plan profile. So I was looking at the result and I noticed something weird inside the beak area. You can see that little ball, that's the object grown from the nostril when I thicken the surface. I bet that's the reason why we couldn't thicken the surface at 1 millimeter, but we have to make it thicker. So I went back to the history by moving the history marker. And I can see that nostril right there. Click and delete. Now I move the history marker to the current time, and the fusion will automatically fix the problem. And now, I double click the thicken step in the timeline and uh, I was able to set the thickness to one millimeter. So the lesson learned here is when we do the surface thicken, we should try to remove the unnecessary details as much as possible before we thicken the surface and that could avoid some issues during the process. All right, we're almost there. Um, I would like to point out one thing here. When we design a 3D stencil, we have to be mindful about how we are going to attach the stencil on the object. For example, it will be hard or even impossible to put this stencil on the model, especially at the leg area. In this case, we can simply remove this part of the stencil because we don't have any punch out features in that area. But if we do, we will have to design a separate piece of a stencil. Lastly, I extend the edge of the stencil. This is to prevent overspraying during the airbrushing. Alright, this is how I design a 3D stencil. Let's go print it. Since we are printing a thin layer of a 3D object, 
it is important to add the support. In Cura, you can select tree support or just normal support. You can see Cura is creating this interesting structure for tree support. Both support settings give about the same print time, so I choose the tree support. I have to say, Kira did a good job on the tree support and as you can see, it came out just like what it was designed in the slicer. Yep, it fits like a glove. If we have the access to the 3D model, coming up with a 3D stencil for paint job is a no-brainer. Hope this video gives you some idea about how to create your own 3D stencils. Please subscribe if you have not. The full dark lure build is coming up, so stay tuned. I will see you next time. Peace!